Hey, this is the national treasure, Nick Aldis, and you're listening to the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast. Thank you very much. So far this week, we've given you our 2020 year end award with Ring of Honor's Vita Von Star and 2021. Was it 15? I think it's 15, right? Wrestling 15 predictions. Yes. Um, as of right now, it's 426 on Saturday afternoon. Um, Wrestle Kingdom is going on a schedule. There's um, some hubbub, Joe, right? A kerfluffle about maybe there's a state of emergency in Tokyo. I don't know, man. They're pretty uh, tight-lipped on what's going on over there. But as of right now, Wrestle Kingdom is going on as advertised. So that, uh, that's good news for us here in the States, Joe. Yeah, I think it's the bird flu, right? The bird flu is causing some problems over there. Is that what it is? You know, uh, yeah, I, um, I, SARS, my, didn't E. coli, think, was it E. coli? Didn't, didn't, where did SARS start? I, I don't know. I'm not really, um, not really a scientist. So I think it's West Nile. Maybe. Is that what it is? Is that what That'd the be, virus? Encephalitis. Yeah. 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 Like black plague. That's probably what it is. Yeah. I think that's you know what it is. You know, it's funny if. Marty Skrull didn't get himself in trouble. That plague doctor mask really could have been a top seller this year, but here we are, right? I actually saw a true story. Some a guy wearing one of those in Target one day. That's a true story. That's are you serious? Story. Yeah. Like, did you ask him where he got it and where you could get one? I almost took a picture of him, but I just felt like that would open up a lot of other. Oh, he would have. He would have cut your body in half. Like, yeah. Trails like uh, Jack the Ripper. Can we call you Joe the Ripper? You can call me whatever you want. I mean, it's 2021. I think. I think you can say anything you want um, these days, so I don't know. Oh, I <laughs> learned that the hard way. Uh, you can't. There's a couple of things you can't say, but oh. there are a lot of things we can say, and what we are going to t- say today um, is a lot about Wrestle Kingdom 15. So Wrestle Kingdom 15 is the second year in a row that they are doing a two-night show back-to-back back in the Tokyo Dome. Um, it is, as Joe just informed me, a 5,000-seat capacity, I think, as per the um, – the rules and regulations? Yeah, last I had heard, they were capping it at 5,000 fans per night. Now, I don't know if that's changed uh, to be any lower because of the the outbreaks going on over in Tokyo and Japan in general, but that was the last I heard. So it's going to be a small crowd either way um, for both nights. It kind of sucks, um, but to be honest, 5,000 people is way more than any American venue has had. Um, I know WWE is really pushing for WrestleMania to have fans, but I don't know what it's going to be. I, dude, who knows if it's 1-2-2021, we're like a week away from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Who knows what the world is going to be like, you know? It's, I feel like we're... Uh, I feel like we're counting down the days, right? Like not to be bleak here, but I don't feel like the world has much much time left. Is that fair? I mean, you know, I don't know, dude. I uh, <laughs> yeah, like you said, I I think I guess WWE is trying to uh, have WrestleMania somewhere in Florida where they can have a certain amount of fans. I don't know. Um, I know they want to try to get fans at the Rumble. I don't think that's going to be happening. AEW, I think, had. Their most fans this past week, it was a little over a thousand at Daly's oh, place. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard right now. We're still really in the same state that we've been in. Um, so I don't, I don't see much changing at least until the spring. So maybe there'll be some hope for WrestleMania in the United States to have some fans in it. Uh, but I guess we'll have to just wait it out. And just, you know, get those, get those vaccinations and uh, see what the outcome so you pushing the vaccinations, buddy? You, you pro-vaccine? We want to get everybody vaccinated. I'm just kidding. We're not doing that. But if you do want to get the vaccination, I think you should play the video game Resident Evil first. Just learn a little bit about the history of what's going on. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But let's start Wrestle Kingdom 2021, Wrestle Kingdom 15, night one. Um, let's, uh, I got the card in front of me. First match of the night, the dark match, the New Japan Rambo, and you and I have no ducking idea what's going on in this match. There's 22 New Japan professional wrestling wrestlers in there, um, it, and it, whoever wins will challenge for the King of Pro Wrestling trophy at night two, I think, but the King of Pro Wrestling trophy match is four. Ba- Next! Next well, I, up! Here's my answer. Minoru Suzuki. That's my answer. If he's he's not booked on any other uh, match, right, for these next two nights, I think. So it's Minoru Suzuki. That's it. I would pay to watch Suzuki just murder uh, your boy. 
down on. Next up, Hiromu Takahashi versus ELP El Phantasmo, um, who will, the winner of this will challenge for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship on night two. ELP won the American um, the New Japan Cup, was it? Yeah, whatever the tournament was that had the end of America. Was it best of the Super Juniors or was it the Super J Cup? It was one of those two. I believe it was uh, the Super J Cup. And um, the winner of this will uh, wrestle Taiji Ishimori on night two. So it's a tough one, man. Um, ELP has a lot of steam behind him and he's been uh, very good in New Japan professional wrestling. Again, it's been a tough year all around. Um, but I think uh, Hiromu Takahashi is going to return to form and uh it should be a fantastic match these guys are are gonna go on absolute balls to the wall and it's the best way to open the show it's gonna be the fastest paced match of the night but i think uh hiromu time bomb takahashi wins this one yeah i agree with you i thought about this one a little bit because like you said el phantasmo has been on a good run and i think it would it would be interesting to see him and ishimori face each other head to head because I think they were teammates in the past but uh, I'm going to go with Takahashi as well in setting up Takahashi versus Shimori on night two next up the tag team title match for the IWGP tag team championship uh, Dangerous Techers Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. taking on the G.O.D. ain't nobody real than Gorilla um, champion uh, Dangerous Techers I should say I think uh, G.O.D takes the titles here i think zach saber and tai chi have had a really good run um and I, I really enjoy what they do um their their style is really they're, they're gelling well the matches are really good um there's good psychology in the matches but i just think uh god might be the longer term stabilized team, um, here. so and it's been a while since they have the title so i'm gonna say god I agree. I'm going to go with G.O.D. Uh, you, you might know this better than me. Yeah, you probably do. Did they win the World Tag League this year for New Japan, G.O.D.? We can look that up while I ramble on. So I'm going to go with G.O.D. as well. But I guess one thing that I'm curious to see uh, if it happens is if Anderson and Gallows get involved, not necessarily during the match, but at some point, on one of these shows. My understanding is that their contracts with Impact allow them to work New Japan should they choose to do so. So I th I think this would, if they're able to get to Japan and that's something that is an option, that they them appearing on one of these shows is something that very well could happen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna th I'm gonna hope that happens because I think that would be interesting to see. Uh, but I'm, officially, my pick on this match will be uh, Geo Day. G.O.D. who did defeat Finjuice at the finals on the uh, World Tag League. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of question marks going on in terms of um, Anderson Gallows, even Kenny Omega. Um, it gives another layer that I, I wasn't prepared for, so I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, Kenta, next up, certificate holder, Joe. It's a certificate versus Satoshi Kojima for the IWGP American title rights <laughs> Uh, US, U.S. title shot? Is that basically what it is? Uh, well, for the certificate, Joe. Not for the shot. It's for the certificate. Uh, oh. Ken, yeah, I think uh, Kenta's going to win. Kojima has had a, a, a strong year, but um, I, Kenta wins. And him and Moxley are uh, destined. I personally, I threw this out to you the other day. I don't know where Moxley is. I think the guy might be in Japan. I think we might get Kenta versus Moxley in Japan, night two of Wrestle Kingdom, only because Moxley was not on screen for the Brody Tribute Show. And I thought New Year's Smash was taped. Now I don't know. Dude, all this shit's very confusing to me, but all I know is last week Moxley was not in Jacksonville. And he doesn't have to be in Jacksonville until Wednesday of this week. So... We could see him. We could see John Moxley there at uh, wrestling, but I think Kenta holds the, title. holds the certificate. I agree. I'm, I agree. I think Kenta will hold it. Um, you know, I don't know if they're going to do any uh, 
funny stuff like the Miz, you know, loses, catches it in, and then gets another shot out of nowhere. You know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of options. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Miz didn't cash it in, bro. Morrison did, even though the the fucking bell rang and Kenta. Kenta's the victim. <laughs> Next up, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Great Khan. Great Khan has, uh, um, of course, aligned himself with Will Ospreay, Jeff Cobb. Um, and he, forgive me, I don't remember what his name was, pre-excursion um, in the world, maybe Burke, fly the nest. But um, there's no reason, rhyme, or anything that he should be defeating Hiroshi Tanahashi at Wrestle Kingdom. So I think uh, Tanahashi wins here. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Great Khan, and I know I'm I'm going a little heel heavy uh, so far. Oh, no. But a lot of times now, when I and, and I I watch New Japan, I don't get to watch every single show because they do put on a lot of shows, which is great, and I appreciate it. I just don't get the opportunity to watch every single one. But most of the time, when I watch, it seems like Hiroshi Tanahashi is on the losing end of things these days. So I'm gonna go with Great Khan to uh, get the victory. Khan, I believe, is part of Will Ospreay's stable in uh, New Japan, so I think this might be an opportunity for New Japan to put, get that stable over a little bit and establish them, so I'm going to go Great Okan. Well, I agree with establishing Will Ospreay's stable, um, but I think that establishment might come in the next matchup, which is uh, the Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada versus Will Ospreay. Um, Will Ospreay, of course, turned on um, Okada earlier in the year during the G1, Right after, yeah, during the G1 and uh, went heel. And he invited current Bay uh, Bea Priestley. And then he was joined by Jeff Cobb and Great Okan. And forgive me if I forget the name of his faction because it's right off the top of my head. But I think Will Ospreay has proven he is more than a uh, junior heavyweight. He's an established heavyweight, um, big boy, strong kind of guy. Put a lot of muscle mass, and he did not miss a beat not being in New Japan for the bulk of the year. So I think a big win over Okada for Osprey uh, is in the cards here. I think it'll even, you know, it'll put him right in that main event title picture. Yeah, I, I agree. I, for those same reasons, I think you have to get Osprey a win here to establish him as more or further as the main event guy that they want him to be and that he wants to be. And a feud with Okada should really be, you know, I, I, this is probably the first, I, I would assume, in a few matches that they will have uh, over the course of the next several months. So it, I'm gonna guess Okada will eventually get a win, but I don't think this is the place for it. So I think that Will Ospreay should get the win here at Wrestle Kingdom Night 1. Main event of Night 1? Uh, champion, IWGP heavyweight champion, IWGP intercontinental heavyweight champion as well. Tetsuya Naito takes on Kota Abushi. Kota two belts, Naito two belts. This match is for both championship belts. Um, New Japan, second year in a row, they have uh, you know had the, both belts on the line. It is an interesting match. Um, Kota Abushi won the G1, but. Can you help me ex explain this to me? He won the G1, lost the certificate. Is that, are we going? Is it called the certificate, Joe? Are you gonna call it a certificate? What? <laughs> I guess you could say the, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. He lost it to Jay White, <laughs> Yeah, he did. That's what happened. He's say Jay White, though. It gets me. So he loses it to Jay White, though. But Naito says, "You know what? You won. You deserve it." Kind of deal. Listen, if this was WWE, if I watched that, I would call bullshit on this. Um, if it was them, I got to call it here. I don't like it. Naito isn't exactly I, – I could see, like, Tanahashi pulling, a, you know, like Tanahashi being the guy that's like, fuck it, I'll take them both on. I'm, I'm a good guy. Naito, it doesn't really make too much sense to me, um, but it gives us a good match. Every time Naito and Abushi have gotten in the ring together – it's been scary. Like <laughs> they, these guys, uh, especially sticking out to me was the G1 two years ago when Abushi, Abushi did that German suplex elevated from the second rope. It's a scary. It's it's 
it's just the scariest move I've ever uh, I've ever seen. These guys are um, two of the best in the world right now. It, this is a really tough one for me, um, but I, I think I think Naito is gonna keep it. Um, yeah, I I'm gonna stick with Naito here. Um, how many times has Naito won the titles and then lost them like immediately? And I don't think we can keep doing that again if we want to establish Naito. He's not the up and comer. He's I mean he's, he's not old. He's just not he's not like he's I think he's 38, 39 years old. Let yep. Naito have a long run with the title. Let Lij reign supreme, and um, Abushi. He seems like the, almost like the Tanahashi territory, where he could lose, and it's really not a big deal because he's going to come back and put on a great match and get another uh, significant win here. But I think you have to keep the belts on Naito. So I'm going to go with Abushi uh, because, similar to, like you're saying, he seems to. He'll get a big win, and then maybe he'll he'll lose something along the way, right? So he he won the G1 in 2019, and then when he went to Wrestle Kingdom, he lost to Okada, and then he lost the next night to Jay White. So he lost two nights in a row at the Biggest Show of the Year. This year he wins the G1 again for the second straight year, and then loses the rights to the title shot to Jay White. So I think that. And this will play into my prediction for night two as well. I think this is the year that they should do like a bit of a redemption for Ibushi. Um, and he should win this match and win both titles on night one. And then get an opportunity to face Jay White in night two. I think So I think that's what's going to happen. I think Ibushi is going to win and win both titles on night one and move on to face Jay White on uh, night two of wrestling. Can I throw a fantasy booking idea at you? You absolutely can. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and turn some lights on in my house while you do that. So please please go ahead. Sure. New Japan is not known for triple threat matches. Um, four corner matches here and there, yes, but not triple threat matches. I think being that you have two shows back to back, I would love to see some sort of schmageki screw job night one leading to a triple threat match for all three, all, all, three, all uh, for both belts. Buster agrees with me, which means I'm on the right track. A triple threat match for both belts on night two. I think that would add in a weird year where shit doesn't make sense anyway. It would add a lot of. Uh, it, it's not something anybody would expect from New Japan to do. Um, it's it's kind of not like hot shot booking, but it's like. There's usually, for the most part, a finish, even if it includes Ghetto and Giotto and Douchery. But I would love to see like a, a double cut, something, something on night one because you know you're going to get a finality in night two. So it's not like you're completely getting screwed on night one. I, I would like to see it It'd be something different than New Japan really has never done. I just yeah, and I also wonder when they're going to split those belts apart at some point again or if they will you know it's been this way for a full year now where they've been unified um you know naito had it lost it to evil lost it back to naito right and they kept the belts together the entire time so i just i wonder if they're gonna attempt to split them at some point i just i don't know yeah, it'd be interesting to see where they go from here uh, after these two nights with them. yeah speaking of these two nights let's get to the second night now Traditionally, what happens after night one is a lot more, not a lot more, but a couple more matches are going to get made for night two. Right now, there are only eight announced matches for night two. Two of them are dark, and one of them is a four-way for the King of Pro Wrestling trophy. We don't know anybody in it. So, Suzuki. <laughs> Suzuki wins. Uh, you say Suzuki. I say... Oh, he's already in this. Um, uh, juice. Yeah, there you go. I say Juice for both nights you say Suzuki for both nights this is because we have a little bit of a wager on the line the winner buys the loser loser buys the winner a shirt on pro wrestling tees which is going to be on sale this week so uh I'm not going to predict the start of matches Joe I don't know about you I'll just read what they are the Queen's Quest Saya Kamatani AZM and Utami Haya Shishita versus Donna Del Mondo oh that's the name of the, the, the trio Donna Del Mondo Micah Natsupoi and Hameka Okay, next up, uh, oh, Mei Iwatami and Tam Nakano versus Donna Del Mundo. Again, Sayuri and Julia. 
cool. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pretend to uh, know a lot about these these folks. I mean, I, I've heard of some of them. I've seen some of them wrestle, but uh, they to make found it, Ring of Honor, right? Yeah, I, Julia, I've heard of. So I'm gonna leave that to, to Bagu. He can comment on. Let us know. So good looking. Um, so the first official match of the night is four-way match for the King of Wrestling Trophy, in which I select Juice and you select Suzuki. Suzuki. Next up, finally, uh, Suzuki Goon, which is El Desperado and Yoshinabu Kanemaru versus who are the champions, um, I should say, versus one or eight. I didn't know that was the tag team name of Taguchi and Master Wato. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, nobody could be trolling me on Wikipedia, but uh, one or eight is the name. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Suzuki Goon keeps it. Um, Desperado has had a really good showing um, this year. And... Uh, I just don't, I don't want to knock Master Watto, but he hasn't, uh, it, it's whatever. Yeah, I'm know, with you. Suzuki. It's whatever, and Taguchi's best stuff was with um, Prince Devitt, you know, eight or nine years ago. So I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Suzuki Goon here. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you for all those same reasons. I, I think Suzuki Goon should, should get the win, so I'm going to go with that. Next up, this is going to fucking rule. It's going to beat the shit out of you if you're watching it. You're going to get hit in the face. Shingo Takagi, um, never open weight champion, defending his title against Jeff Cobb. Man, you know, with the G1 last year when Jeff Cobb was in it, I thought he was going to make a bigger splash than he did. I thought maybe the, um, the U.S. love and appreciation for Jeff Cobb would have carried over into New Japan, but it didn't seem like they were maybe as high on him as... Uh, America was because he took a lot of clean pinfall losses. Which, which, I mean, I have no problem with. That. I, I just expected more of a uh, maybe some more wins for Jeff Cobb. That being said, I think Shingo is one of the absolute best wrestlers in the world. Can't miss. Just every single match um, is great. I don't want to see him lose here at all. Unfortunately, I think. I'm going to see him lose here, and I'm going to see him lose clean and lose the never open weight title to further establish Will Smith's uh, Will Smith, wow, <laughs> Will Osprey's group. So uh, I think uh, Jeff Cobb gets a clean Duke over Shingo. Yes, the Empire apparently is the name of Osprey's group. By the way, I just wanted to throw that in there. Are you a big fan of Roman? I uh, I think he would have to be. I could you not be? I, I agree. I think Jeff Cobb wins for the same reason. So, I mean, I, I'm i predicting that Osprey and Cobb and Great O'Conn and all these guys win their matches this weekend. I'm not sure if that'll happen, but I'm going to also go with Jeff Cobb. I think he's he had a great showing to me in the G1 this year, uh, and he's, he's, I think, overdue for another uh, title run here in New Japan. So I'm going to go with Jeff Cobb at Next up, uh, the battle of LIJ, well, former battle of L I battle of former LIJ guy, um, Evil versus Sonata. A year and a half ago, I would have had a much different take on this match. I was a big Evil guy. Love Evil. Not so high on Sonata. Boy, how times have changed. I'm so sick of the ghetto, Jado, just bullshit. I'm so tired of it. Evil's matches have been terrible. And I'm not going to necessarily blame him. It's just the booking. You know, the, the Kenta stuff and the Jay White stuff. It, it's it's overdone. If you have, like, one of those guys doing it with all the interference and the run-ins and shit, it's okay. But when you have so many, like, if you were to put those three guys, like, Kenta, Jay White, and Evil, and, like, you asked me to rank him in importance, Evil's at the bottom, right? Even though he had the title, like, he just... He's a better tag wrestler, I think, than he is a singles wrestler. He had a, a defining win over Okada a couple of years back, and I was like, oh, this is going to be like the difference for Evil. And I think Evil would have made more sense coming out of LIJ than going to the Bullet Club because it just doesn't sit well. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, doesn't really do it for me. It doesn't. Uh, doesn't cook the turkey in the oven. Tur turkey's not brine, but um, so I'm going to go with Sonata here based out of spite because this Evil <laughs> shit sucks. So I'm going to go with Sonata. Yeah, it's funny, actually, because I was going to say I'm going with Sonata just because I want Sonata to win. So normally I try to make a prediction 
based off of storyline or what makes sense or what I think they're going to do. But I'm just picking Sonata because I want to see Sonata win. I agree with you about Evil. I was I was always pro Sonata over Evil in terms we of comparison. Yeah, we but I did recognize that Evil was improving. I, I thought, at least to me, he was. And it, you know, his his gimmick, his character seemed to be very over with the audience when he was still in Lij. The yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And I, of course, they changed all that up when he left and, and joined Bullet Club, which I, I guess you kind of have to do to a certain extent, right? Because you want to kind of give him a different look and feel. I just think that one of the things that 2020, as far as New Japan, will be remembered for, for me, is I think that the evil title win over Naito was a bit of a misfire on their part. I understand what they were trying to do, right? You want to make another main event level heal, you know, catapult evil into that level. I just, it didn't go as good as I think it should have gone. The matches he had with Naito were not great. So to me, his stock has, has actually has dropped a little bit now. And uh, if you have a good, sorry to cut you off, but if you can't have a good match with Naito, who can you have a good match with? Yeah, and, uh, and like you said earlier, a lot of that Bullet Club interference stuff, it just kind of gets a little bit uh, a little bit old with the Dick Togo stuff now. So anyway, I'm going to go with Sonata as well. I'll be pulling for Sonata to win as much as anybody this weekend. So go Sonata. What do you think he orders when he's in the drive through <laughs> Dick to go. <laughs> really not what I expected <laughs> but to be fair about this bullet club interference like you're gonna see it on the car if you have Kenta Jay White and Evil on the card you're gonna see it three times and when Evil was in the main event but it was the third time you saw it I'm like all right I'm, I'm tired of this shit I get it whatever um like when the Bucks were heels with Omega and the Elite like it would be sporadic you were far between you wouldn't see it so much every night which is why like you're, when he does it, you're like, ah, oh, that's a dick heel move. Not like, all right, this is all you have to fall back on to get these guys over your skills. Next up, Taiji Ishimori versus the winner of the match on night one between Hiromu Tanbam, Takahashi, and ELP. You and I both... You want Takahashi, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, so, last year, Hiromu Takahashi defeated Will Ospreay for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Um, Ishimori has been a good champion, but I don't, you know, I, I'm still going my man, uh, Hiromu here. I, I think he's probably the best wrestler in the, um, junior heavyweight division. And I, um, I like Taiji Ishimori, but it, is it, is it me? It just kind of feels like he's missing something. Is, that, is it just me? Um, I think maybe there are other guys in the division that may, that, you could say have a little bit more in terms of charisma than him but i think he's he's an excellent wrestler as you said i think he's a solid solid champion whether as a singles champion or a tag champion but i agree i'm, I'm gonna go with hiromu to win here i almost kind of feel like hiromu is slotting into the role of what kushida used to be in the junior heavyweight division where like kushida was kind of the featured baby face for a long time would always find himself in these junior heavyweight title matches, especially at Wrestle Kingdom. I'm not sure if that's what they're going for, but it feels a little bit like that with Hiromu. So I'm going to say that Hiromu wins this match and the title on night two. Okay. Um, main event of the night, Tetsuya Naito, Naito or Kota Ibushi taking on Jay White, the briefcase holder, their certificate holder that um, defeated Kota Ibushi previously this year for the belt. Uh, for the I have Tetsuya Naito. You have Kota Ibushi. Um, I think Tetsuya Naito is going to walk out as champion um, of double, uh, champion, sorry, Naito two belts of Night Two as um, kind of what you said in regards to like a redemption. But Naito has been he could win the big one, but he can't hold on to it. And I think beating Kota Ibushi and Jay White back to back nights would dispel that stigma. So I'm going to say Naito keeps the belt. Here. Yeah, I guess similarly, I'm going to go with Abushi uh, to win this match as well. And I think that, again, listen, I have no idea what Ghetto is, is planning to do. I just think that it would be cool as a story of Abushi you know, wins the G1 in 2019, 
loses both nights at Wrestle Kingdom uh, last year. This year he wins G1 2020, loses his opportunity at the title shot, and then Naito goes ahead and gives him a shot. He'll win it on night one, and then I think he'll get revenge on Jay White in night two and walk away as the double champion, double gold, I think is what it's called. Um, yeah, so I think that I think that's what they should do. I, I, Ibushi, I believe, is about the same age as Naito, or very close to it. So, you know, he's he's been back with New Japan for a couple of years now. I think he signed like a, what a, what amounts to a lifetime contract with them. I think he's at the top of his 30. game. Was that? They're both thirty eight. They're both thirty eight. Yeah, there you go. So I think I think he's at the top of his game. And you know, you give you got a guy wins G one two years in a row. I feel like. It's the time to put the the title on him. You know, it doesn't look like they're going to go back to Okada right away, unless you know they set things up coming out of these shows. So I think it'll be good to put it on Ibushi, and you can work uh, with some programs from there. Maybe he, you know, he works with Osprey in the title program at some point during the year. Um, you know, there's of course there's, you know, Evil. There's other guys that he can he can work with um, as a babyface. So I'm going to say that Ibushi ends up you know the champion at the end of these two nights, and it's really all about uh, you know him walking out as the top guy of New Japan after this weekend. That's a good point. Um, the fact that Abushi would have won two um, two G1s in a row and not captured the title. So I really honestly didn't think that. I, I looked at it as a singular match or what I would do, but I could I could definitely see the, um, the storyline where uh, it would have culminated. I, I think that would tell a really good story. Um, you know, night two is a little weird because there's so much we don't really know. That's from night one, a lot of the matches. Also, night, I mean, you're missing the ace. You're missing Tanahashi. I don't see any Kenta on the card, which is okay. Um, I don't see any uh, Ishii on the card. Like you mentioned, there's no Suzuki. But I guess when you have short cards with uh, the new normal, whatever kind of bullshit people are going to call it, like you're not going to have... Uh, 15 match cards that go on five hours with 40 people in the New Japan Rumble and shit like that. So it's definitely going to be a different experience. I'm invested. I'm interested. I'm interested to see if we're going to get any of those surprises that we talked about. I know New Year's Dash is coming up right after that, um, which is really where everything for the New Year kicks off. But on paper, there's some very, um, very interesting, very intriguing uh, matchups. Yeah, I think you're you're right on with all that. Uh, it's it's a different uh, you know kind of year. It's going to be a different atmosphere. The cards are shorter, um, but I guess you got to just go forward with whatever you know booking plans they have, with the expectation that hopefully by like you know the middle of the year they'll be back to having your know, regular shows and regular fans. So I think that's you know, we and I think there's still also some intrigue in terms of who's going to win. I, I, you know, we, we have different choices for who's going to walk away out as the champion, uh, both, you know, night one, night two. So there's a lot of different things that can happen there. There's definitely a lot of intrigue for me in that regard. I think that the show itself is probably lacking a little bit of the buzz that it's had in years past, but you know, again, that's, there's not going to be 40,000 people in the dome. There's not going to be, you know, a, you know, 10 matches, but they've done a good enough job of getting, some of the big programs out there and uh, the matches on paper like you said should be very good and i would expect them to deliver on the fourth and the fifth when these cards take place um yeah the the buzz even like the buzz hasn't been there but not for lack of trying because they had the world tag league they had the best of super juniors they have the fighting spirit show on friday or um whatever they call the the friday night show in america like they have there's they're doing the best they can, all things considered. I think the world is just in such a, a shitty place for some people. It's tough to focus on that. But I guarantee Tuesday morning, or Tuesday afternoon, whatever, whatever the show is going to be over, people are going to be talking about it. Um, and I, I don't know. I just have a feeling we're going to be in for some, uh, for some surprises and some good wrestling. Did you want to recap SmackDown from last night? Uh, no, I don't, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, if anybody wants us to, they can they can tweet us and say, "Hey guys, we really want to hear SmackDown reviews." Every week. more Sonya Deville is what we're getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that that type of not thing. too much Sonya Deville, but like a little bit of Sonya Deville. A little bit of Sonya Deville. Yeah. yeah, and if you want to tweet us, you can do so at the all. Oh, I'm sorry, at all night long WP all over your social medias, your Instagram, your Twitter facebook.com slash all night long wp and make sure you go to youtube.com 
and follow our friends over at Wrestling Headlines as they take care of us and they host all of our um, podcasts over there. We very much appreciate them. And if you're in the mood for some swag, it's uh, the holiday season. You got some extra cash burning a hole in your pocket. Go to our friends over at Born Scum Clothing Company. Use the promo code at promo codes all night long. At I'm giving I'm giving I'm giving Instagram handles now, Joe. All night long. Take 10% off. You want hats, you want hoodies, tank tops, soap on a rope. They got it all. Born Scum Clothing Company. And be sure to follow us along, like I said, on Twitter. Uh, we'll be talking all week about Wrestle Kingdom. And uh Joe, what did I miss? I feel like I missed something. No, I think you got it all, buddy. That was it. You sure you don't want to talk more about SmackDown? No. No, nope, I'm sure. Yep. I'm uh I'm good. What about the Miami Vice podcast you and I were talking about? <laughs> I think you know, I don't I don't know, man. I was I was I was I was kind of putting it out. Someone had done a Miami Vice podcast like episode by episode. I sent I sent it to Mikey um hoping that he would maybe have interest in I'm starting in- up his own Miami Vice podcast. Um, Wait, I thought then. we were I thought we were going to start the Miami Vice podcast. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if people are interested in that, then uh, absolutely. We could see if we can get Don Johnson on. DJ, my man. You know. Bill Michael Thomas. Uh, God, he's, if nothing, I think we should start dressing like them. When we, when, uh, you know what? Let's, let's make this decree. Right now, January 2nd, 2021, the first wrestling show in New York that you and I can attend in person, we will dress like Crockett and Tubbs. Can I get a virtual handshake? I'll wear a fucking salmon undershirt, white loafers, white sports coat, Sperry boat shoes, and you have to dress like Ricardo Tubbs. Yeah, I'm in. That's not even no hesitation. All you need is uh, to be black and a jerry curl. And, okay. um, I, and he, I mean, he usually wears like blue and kind of like a, a denim look. If you can get a Jerry Curl by then, you and I will be at shows like Crockett and Tubbs. It'll I look think, like when everybody dressed up like the Horsemen in the '80s. Yeah, I think my girlfriend has like a curling iron or something, so I can probably if I just let it grow out a little bit, and then yeah. I can just you know curl it up and uh, workshop some suit uh, and shirt combinations. And I just need one of those comfortable pairs of shoes that you talked about, and I should be good to go. Yeah, I'll get you some of them Sperry's, and uh, I forget what they put in there. Uh, like maybe like motor oil in the hair. It's it's all deadly. It's uh you know ne- twenty twenty one is the new nineteen eighty six. That's how I look at it. And uh, before we um, you know we really get going on this um, Miami Vice podcast, we're gonna let you guys go. We thank you for checking out the all night long wrestling podcast. And he's the stallion. I'm the enforcer, and we're tapping out. Friends.